Our next speaker is Dr. Alphonse Juan. From, he's Associate Professor of Computer Science at the Polytechnic University of Valencia. And he will be showing us, I hope, um, recent advances in automatic speech recognition, machine translation, and text-to-speech text technologies. And this will all be working towards um, a machine, um, yeah, machine translation of online educational resources. So it's really the logical conclusion of our, or the logical next step of the discussion that we've just had. So if you're, are you ready? Yeah. I'm ready, thank you very much. Okay, uh, my presentation is uh, exactly on this, on advanced language technologies uh, in the area of education, in which they are playing an increasingly important role. And in particular, I will be showing some recent results at my research group on multilingual subtitling and text translation in, in this area. So this is the outline, but the presentation is brief, so I skip this slide. So, well, <clears throat> the, the language technologies uh, we are using have been developed uh, at the Machine Learning and Language Processing Research Group at the Universitat Politecnica de Valencia with the support of a, the European Commission through a couple of uh, European research projects. First one is uh, translectures, a okay, transcription and translation of video lectures, a recent project that was completed in 2014, and a more recent project uh, called EMMA, European Multiple MOOC Aggregator, that has been recently completed about multilingual MOOCs. And also there's a, a, another project on multilingual open resources for education supported by the Spanish government. Okay. The core language technologies we are using are automatic speech recognition. We have developed uh, domain adapted uh, systems for education for the particular uh, tasks uh, we are facing for English, Spanish, Catalan, German, French, Estonian, Italian, Dutch, Portuguese, and Slovene in these uh, projects. Uh, also, uh, machine translation, of course, we have heard here uh, very interesting talks about neural MT and the progress uh, MT is uh, um, achieving in recent years. And in particular, we are uh, considering all the pairs of the languages uh, considered for speech recognition using English as a uh, pivot, uh, pivot language, okay? And also text-to-speech uh, synthesis, which we think uh, is the logical next step just for dubbing uh, videos, okay? In this case, we have considered English, Spanish, and Catalan. And here, there's a, an interesting um, task, maybe you, you are not aware, uh, is uh, automatic cross-lingual voice conversion that can be very interesting in, the, in this area, okay? So, <clears throat> Due to its uh, um, relation to this forum, I, I want to emphasize the work we have uh, carried out in EMMA in this uh, recently completed project, European Multiple MOOC Aggregator is the address. Well, the, the goal of the project was to provide multilingual uh, access to European MOOCs from many countries of the European Union. The motivation, the idea behind was that the language barrier, of course, uh, was, was keeping many learners in fact, is keeping many learners from taking MOOCs. And the idea was to exploit the, these advanced language technologies, mainly developing the other project in translate lectures, to translate the uh, videos and text for the MOOCs. Okay? So let me summarize what the uh, costs of manually translating MOOCs were at the point we, were, we started. So before, for the, in the case of videos, before translation, videos are manually transcribed in 10 times the duration of the videos. RTF is real-time factor, it's okay. So this is the more or less the, the baseline we, we, we use. And then for, then transcriptions are translated. And our estimation of the manual cost is uh, 30 times the duration of the videos. Okay, so then this amounts to 40 times the duration of the videos. So our course, including two hours, would take half person month, more or less, okay. So for text, uh, Manual translation rate is approximately 2,500 words per day, so a six-week course would 
with uh, 75,000 words would take one and a half person months. This is more or less the basic uh, the starting point. And we will see that the, well, well, we know that in order to lower costs, there are two basic approaches. One is crowdsourcing, and the idea that we are trying to push is the idea of using automatic tools for ASR, automatic speech recognition and machine translation. And we will see the main idea uh, I would like you to keep in mind is that the effort is reduced more than 30% to, to 50%. More or less, it is helped. So the, you can, for, for us, the message is that you can gain productivity a lot. You can double your productivity by using these technologies, at least in this domain. Okay? So a two-person month course would, uh, uh, effort would be reduced to just uh, half a person month. Okay? So here is a, just a reminder of the, the workflow. Automatic transcriptions uh, are first produced, then are manually reviewed using a nice interface, whatever you prefer. Then the uh, clean or reviewed uh, transcription and, uh, transcriptions are translated, and their translations are reviewed using an interface, the, your preferred interface. Okay. Uh, translation of text is similar to that of videos. In this case, you only you see the subtitles, well, uh, the text as subtitles like this. Okay. And this is a summary of the results uh, we have obtained. This is a, a long table I will summarize in just four figures. Okay. But uh, the first table is about video transcription. Here we have the word error rate. This is an error measure. This is the Emma uh, word error rate. This is a comparison with Google. Google, in all cases, makes more errors than our tool. And what's the reason behind? The reason is that we adapt our tools to the domain. So for instance, we take into account the slides, articles, uh, teaching materials in order to adapt the system to the task. And then we get much better results. And this is really important for our task. And, and then in terms of effort, so uh, here the average of um, uh, relative uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, improvement of the EMMA systems with respect to YouTube is about uh, 60 percent, 60. And then the gain in terms of uh, time saving, cost use effort to review transcriptions is about uh, uh, 50 percent, okay, more or less. And in the case of uh, translation, which is the main part of the cost, of course, because transcription is uh, cheaper okay, than uh, translation, we are, here we have the pairs, here we have the EMR results. In, ter for, in terms of a quality measure, bleh, okay, you have heard about it here, and here we have the results from Google Translate. Google Translate is not as accurate as these uh, tools because they are adapted. And in the case of education, this is particular true, particularly true because we use very specialized terms and then having these terms in the, let's say, at hand for the systems is really helpful, okay? So then uh, here the average in terms of quality gains is about 16, only 16 in Bleu. But the time saving is 60% in productivity. And these are real figures, figures from the project, figures from MOOC uh, authors reviewing the output. Okay, in the project. Okay, okay. This is uh, just to <clears throat> emphasize that uh, these tools are easy uh, can be easily integrated in any platform because of the cloud computing we have, uh, the nice cloud computing we have uh, right now. So, just with a web service and API associated to it uh, is um, enough suffices to integrate these techniques. Okay. Okay, this is a, a demo here just to point this uh, address uh, where we have demos of the uh, videos, I mean, for the <coughs> videos transcribed and translated uh, using these tools. And then I wanted to show you a couple of videos on this that can be accessed through this address. Okay. okay. I, I, I must say that, okay. Then, Well, first of all, these are the, our systems are, use, are being used in production in our university, so all recordings are subtitled in the, the, the transcription and then translated. Here we, you have an example. Hello, my name is Carmen Munzert. I'm from SAP in Germany. This is automatic Germany, transcripts. And today I would like to present you the European Initiative Academy Cube. What is it? 
Well, this initiative was launched this March in 2013 by several companies and an organism of the European Union to okay. address the following situation, which is a little bit paradoxic. We have on one side... Okay, it's not 100% uh, accurate, but for the purpose it's good enough. Okay, let's, another, let's see another example. Yeah, okay. This is uh, Lee Rubinstein, Vice President of FedEx. Our university is part of FedEx, and they are now pushing blended learning, using their MOOCs as the support for the blended learning. Well, this is a, I'm showing this uh, uh, recording just to compare with the other recording. The other was at the a studio, so the, uh, the audio quality was perfect and the transcription were really good. And I'm showing this one, which is a talk given by these, uh, okay, like. Decide if you would like to buy credit from ASU for that course. No admissions fee, no registration fee. You pay $200 per credit, so an average course is three credits or $600. In the US, you'd be able to do your freshman year online for $5,000 and you'd use the edX platform to do it. And anybody in the world that wants to take those courses can, and the credits are all transferable. ASU would be considered a primary first. Okay, that's enough. It, it also works well. So it is not only about uh, recordings at a studio, but it can also be applied with very accurate results at recording on, on classrooms, regular classrooms with uh, equipment, appropriate equipment. And then, let me, uh, okay, here, um, have another one, French, this one. This is a... This is from the Emma platform. This is a, a video in a book uh, course on uh, wines from the Université de Bourgogne. Bonjour et bienvenue sur le MOOC Culture et Écriture Numérique. Je vous propose de découvrir cette nouvelle culture à l'ère du tout digital pendant six semaines avec des enseignants-chercheurs, des professeurs de l'Université de Bourgogne et d'autres établissements, tous experts dans leur domaine, okay. qui viendront vous expliquer de façon pragmatique et abordable. Ok. Um... Okay, so it works also quite well in this case for this MOOC. And then let me show you an example I'm using. I'm a professor at the university. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Yes, first my my talk, my recording in the, in Catalan. El següent objecte de presentatge té per títol Raonament Proalístic, Representació i Inferència. And then what we are doing now is to uh, try to a full translation of all the teaching materials, including the slides and, and my, my audio recording. So everything is automatically translated and then uh, and assembled in order to have uh, this, to provide our lecture recordings in different languages. The following learning object is entitled my synthetic voice, my Reasoning, mother. Representation and Inference. It is so about a very important topic in the development of intelligent systems and... Okay, so yeah, just to, to end, let me summarize a... This, uh, you can visit these demos at this uh, URL. A, our main conclusions from Emma are that multilingual access to courses boosts uh, visibility. You can double your students by, offer, by offering your teaching materials in different languages, of course. The cost of manually translating is high, but you can reduce temporal cost, the productivity to, to just uh, the health of the cost. And there are still many things that can be deserved, some innovation, some research in order to improve the accuracy of the systems, uh, languages, recording conditions, and so on. And the, well, you have to take into account many things in order to develop accurate systems, just 
last, uh, so sorry, just uh, like slides, interfaces, and so on. Okay, and that's all. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was extremely interesting, and I have to say, I think, like most people, I really prefer your real voice to, uh, your, yeah. to your virtual voice. Yeah, but yeah. suppose that uh, I'm not uh, mastering a different language, so I could have myself speaking in another Okay, so it, 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 this is mainly the uh, uh, thought for the case in which you do not master another language. So, for instance, you have a, a, a professor in, in Spanish that cannot uh, offer the courses in, in English. Mainly, uh, maybe in that case, it could be interested for for the for the professor to that. Okay, thank you very much. Has any questions? No. I was just going to say, has anybody got a question? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, okay, it's a question, common question. Um, where is the, the mic? Um, so I, um, I need to say, and I will say it also during the talk, that we have to be much, much more gently towards Google <laughs> if we are uh, to compete seriously in the setup which is called European Union. Uh, the results you have shown, uh, first of all, are older results. Uh, secondly, I mean, uh, Google has just released the neural machine translation system, which is adaptable to everything. So I think that the game should be played not on whether we have a blue score of 1% more or 2% more, but what sort of translation we are producing. So if the translation is reusable. Uh, plus, I think that the blue scores that you had, um, I mean, you, you do understand blue score, yeah? I mean, these were huge differences. So it, <laughs> What's your question, please? <laughs> the huge, the huge What's your question? Yeah, that was a question. The, yeah. the blue scores, yeah, yeah, because the a, uh, the quality results depending on the language pair differ a lot. You know that. So it's a for languages for which we have a good systems, the blue scores are, are high, and for languages which are more difficult, different difficult pairs, the the blue scores are lower. So you know that. Yeah, that's true. And, they, and by, by the way, Google, <coughs> Google is uh, up to now, with, to my knowledge, only maybe only recently they have moved in, in, let's say, adaptable systems. But up to now, what they offer is a general purpose a system for translation. And in, also in the case of uh, YouTube, I mean, they, the system uh, is designed to transcribe uh, all kinds of videos in general. So it cannot be adapted to a, a each particular case, to me. Okay. Yeah, okay. The transcription that we saw on screen, was that through automatic uh, speech recognition? And again, when we saw you speaking, in, I think was it English at the end, was that done automatically from the speech recognition, was it then transcribed and then put into English speech? Is that, have I understood it correctly? The yes, exactly like this. 